Hey everyone, so last month Sandy and I took a short trip from New York City to Philadelphia. Um, so I thought it'd be a great chance to take a practice swing at vlogging. So here it is, our 48 hours in Philadelphia. You can pick up the mega bus at the 34th Street Hudson Yard stop off the 7. You're gonna wanna arrive a little early. It can be a little confusing there sometimes trying to figure out which queue you're supposed to be in and the lines can be pretty long. Once your bus is there, uh, you board, you show the guy or girl your email confirmation on your phone, you hand them your luggage, and then you find a seat. What I would recommend you do is if they have them available, you can pay an extra dollar per seat to get a reserve seat. That way you don't have to get there super duper early and uh, you know you're gonna be able to sit next to your travel mates. If you are traveling to Philadelphia from New York City, you really have like three options. You can take a car or you can take the Amtrak, which is actually super convenient, very fast, um, but it can get a little pricey. Your cheapest option would be to use Megabus or Bolt. If you plan ahead enough, you can get your tickets pretty cheap. There are two stops in Philadelphia. One is at 6th and Market, the other is at 30th Street Station. We got off at 6th and Market because it was right next to Independence Hall and also our hotel. You can book your tickets for Independence Hall online. Otherwise, you can show up first thing in the morning at the Constitution Center there, the little visitor center and you can see if they have any tickets av available for the day. If you order your tickets online, you have until 40 minutes before your tour to go pick them up at will call. Ready to go. After that, you have 30 minutes before your tour to go through security. We had some time to wait between picking up our tickets and taking our tour, so we went over to the Independence Beer Garden, which is just catty corner to Independence Hall. It's a really nice place to kind of sit, chill, relax, and have a beer. We went through security within 30 minutes and we ended up on the tour that actually started before ours. Uh, you go into a little room adjacent to Independence Hall where the park ranger comes in and uh, gives you a little like uh, spiel about you know where you are. After you're in that room, they lead you over and you can see the uh, two sides of Independence Hall. One side is like a courtroom and then the other side is where they actually signed the Declaration and wrote the Constitution and all that really cool stuff. So if you're a history nerd, it's pretty awesome to see that. So you really get to see those two rooms and then you're released out to the, the grounds in the back to take some pictures. After that, we went over to see the Liberty Bell where you wait in line for a little bit and you go through this little uh, hallway full of cool uh, displays. But usually everybody kind of just beelines, I think, towards the back to get their picture with the Liberty Bell. Then we went off to find a real national treasure, which is Wawa. It's awesome. It's where most of my drunk nights uh, ended up when I lived in Philly in my early 20s. Luckily, I've matured. We are drunk and we are in Wawa. Uh, after that, uh, we checked out uh, Michelin Ness, which is where I got this really cool t-shirt. So Michelin Ness makes really, really cool sports clothing and their headquarters is here in Philadelphia and they have a little shop in Center City that you can check out kill some time because our hotel still didn't have power, we went over to the Franklin. The Franklin's one of those like first places that I, I took Sandy when she first visited Philadelphia because my cousin Zach at the time was working there. And it's just always a good place where really solid cocktails and they really know what they're doing. For dinner, I was super excited to take Sandy to Cadence which is in the Fishtown area of Philly. Cadence Restaurant, I'm super excited. I have a table there a few weeks in advance. It was rated number one new restaurant in Food and Wine Magazine. So it's like super non-pretentious. They do four course meals for $68. 
uh, or you can order a la carte. It was so delicious, and the chefs were actually in the back. Uh, John Noodler, Samantha Kincaid, and Michael Fry. They're actually the ones back there making your food. Our waitress was awesome and gave us some really great recommendations. It's also a BYOB, which is kind of a popular thing in Philadelphia. You can go over to Bottle Bar, which is a few blocks away, and they have a shelf there that's called the Cadence Collection, and it's recommended wines for you to bring along with you. It was a really great experience. They had really cool like art on the wall that you can buy, I think. Um, and it was just like a really nice experience. The food was so good. Our second day, we woke up and we took a stroll down to South Street, where it's kind of got a little bit of like a Mardi Gras kind of a vibe. It's a little touristy, but there's like really great art everywhere you look, built into the sides and alleyways from an artist called uh, Isaiah Zager. I, I might be mispronouncing his name. And he's also got the Magic Garden on South Street. It's really cool. You can see it all throughout South Philly there, and his stuff. Then we kind of took 9th Street down, kept walking until we hit the uh, Italian market, which you might remember from the movie Rocky. In the Italian market area, you're gonna find butcher shops, produce, some really cool restaurants. Um, there's also like a pretty good Mexican presence there. So we always go there to get tortillas from uh, Tortilla San Roman. They make the tortillas like right in front of you and chips, and it's so delicious. We always go there to like pick up a ba big bag of chips, bring back to New York with us. We had planned to go to South Philly Barbacoa, but it turns out they're actually only open Saturday through Monday, and we were there on a Thursday, so we didn't get lucky enough to go there. We did, however, go to Mole Poblano, which was right next to it, and it was also delicious. If you keep walking south on 9th Street, eventually you're gonna hit the two Warring Cheesesteak places, Pat's and Gino's. If you're trying to decide between the two, I would go to Pat's. Now my favorite cheesesteak place is Jim's on 4th and South. That's where I'm always going when I'm in Philadelphia. If you really, 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 really wanna be a Philly champion, what you can do is you can go across the street to Lorenzo's Pizza. They had these huge, big boardwalk slices. They're also known for their excellent customer service. You can take your cheesesteak from Jim's, put it in your big boardwalk slice of pizza, fold the pizza up around it, and then you have South Philly Taco. We then decided to meet up with my sister, Stacy at Second District Brewing in South Philly. They have some pretty good vegan options on the menu. My sister loves their vegan cheesesteak. After we left Second District Brewing, we went to the highlight of the trip, which was the Philadelphia Phillies versus the evil Los Angeles Dodgers on Star Wars night. So I was there repping the Phillies. Sandy was repping her home team, the Dodgers. We actually did the Hall of Fame club this time. They have like memorabilia everywhere. They have like their own little bars up there on concession stands. It's really, really neat. The seats were pretty good as well. Turned out to be a good decision because the whole game got delayed until 10.30 at night. So we hung on as long as we could. And uh, I believe we stayed until the seventh inning. I'm not gonna say who won the game because it was a four game series and the Phillies took two, and the Dodgers took two. So, in a way, everybody won. The next morning, we went to Luna Cafe, which is one of our favorite places that has uh, brunch. It's on Market Street, kind of near Independence Hall. Delicious. So when it was time to come home, we caught the bus at 6th and Market. We had reserved seats again, so I wouldn't do that unless you had the reserved seats. I would pick up the bus at 30th Street Station. That was our trip to Philadelphia. It was pretty much exactly 48 hours. Let me know in the comments what are your favorite things to do in Philadelphia, um, or if you were recommending someone stuff to do in Philly, if they were only here for 40 hours, where would you tell them to go? Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully gonna try and make more of these in the next few months. Be on the lookout for more videos from me uh, coming soon. All right, catch you later guys.